this and we will be covering river grading the rejuvenation of rivers as well as superimposed and antecedent drainage patterns that form part of the geography syllabus when we talk about river grading we talk about a river being in a graded profile or an ungraded profile as we can see over here we have the source of the river and we have the river mouth and this is a longitudinal profile of the river and we can see that it has a perfectly uniform and concave shape from source to mouth now a graded profile indicates that the river has enough energy to carry its load and there is no erosion or deposition um, occurring with the within the river's course when we look at an ungraded profile we can clearly see that there is a point where the concavity of the river profile is disrupted from source to mouth there is no concave shape as we have over here we have a point over here that disrupts that and this could be a waterfall, a dam, a rapid, and these are known as nick points. Now, nick point is a temporary base level. We will refer to base levels in the following points. But just to know that a nick point is a temporary base level and your mouth where your sea level, where the mouth meets the sea level, your sea level is your permanent base level. Now, an ungraded profile simply indicates that your river has irregularities along its path in the form of nick points and it is not concave then we look at being undergraded or overgraded when we look at an ungraded profile we we can see over here that this river will before the nick point it will try and erode to get so we need to know that a river will always try and form a graded profile it will always try and form that concave shape and therefore it will try and erode before the nick point in order to try and get that concavity going. After the nick point, it will try and deposit in order to try and substitute for the concave shape that it is trying to get. Now, before the nick point, we said that it will try and erode and that is overgraded. When you refer to overgraded, your erosion is dominant. After the nick point, so as we said, this will try and erode this nick point and become graded. And over here we will have deposition in order to try and get that concave shape and we refer to that as undergraded where your deposition is dominant your sediment will be deposited until we get a concave shape to our permanent base level then we look at the rejuvenation of rivers so there are four reasons for the rejuvenation of a river firstly a change in the permanent base level due to a change in sea level so if your sea level rises or drops then there will be rejuvenation of the river as it tries to erode or deposit in order to get a graded profile. Isostatic uplift or the uplift of continental material will also lead to the rejuvenation of a river as the, reju uh, the river tries to get a graded profile, which is disrupted by is isostatic uplift. Changing climate or increased rainfall will give the river increased energy and therefore will rejuvenate its ability to erode into the land and river capture where a there's an increase in the volume and energy of a river will lead to more erosion more possibility for erosion and therefore rejuvenation now rejuvenation is simply the renewed ability of a river to erode into a landscape because of a change in base level in the form of continental uplift or change in sea level or renewed energy which will come from increased rainfall or river capture there are three things that will that will come from rejuvenation and these are paired terraces as we will discuss below meanders which can be entrenched and grown and nick points now paired terraces you when you have renewed vertical erosion it cuts a new channel with an ex within an existing one so as you can see every time the river is rejuvenated it cuts down bringing a new channel within an old channel leading to our paired terraces the original floodplain is at a higher level than the current floodplain Meanders, we can have a steep cutoff slope due to increased vertical erosion, which we will refer to as incised meanders. Entrenched is when we have a rapid fall in base level and vertical erosion is dominant. And ingrown, you have a fall in base level that is slow and vertical and lateral erosion occur. Then we look at abstraction and river capture. So we can see we have drainage basin A and a drainage basin B on the left over here. 
we have sojourn species A has a steeper gradient and less resistant rock, which means that there's more erosion and your river retreats. By headward erosion, your river retreats from point one to point two. Your watershed then shifts by, by a process known as abstraction. It will shift from point one to point two, and you're, you have an increase in the volume of water as you're now capturing this, this piece of land where this water would have flowed into basin B will now flow into basin A. As I've said, headward erosion occurs between 1 and 2, and the water from area 1 and 2 will no longer flow into B, but flow into A. Eventually, your river will meet the river that flows from drainage basin B, and you will have a process known as river capture. Now, river capture is indicated by these diagrams, where you have a capture stream, your divide your watershed that is shifted and by headward erosion this will shift right and this will eventually meet your river over here. That is shown in this diagram, it is shifted all the way along and it meets the beheaded stream, we refer to this, this stream as the beheaded stream, we refer to the point that they meet as the elbow of capture, we refer to the point between the beheaded stream and the misfit stream as the wind gap which will have the rivers gravels and we then refer to the stream that has now lost its headwaters as the misfit stream. Remember that stream which has captured the beheaded stream is known as the captor stream. Then lastly we have a look at the superimposed antecedent drainage. When we look at superimposed drainage this is where you have a river that has cut into the original landscape. So by erosion, your older layers of horizontal strata are exposed at the Earth's surface and your river then cuts down into the older landscape that has been exposed, where your younger river is now flowing through your original older landscape. Whereas when we speak about antecedent drainage, this is when you have new landforms that form due to tectonic forces. So you may have folding and you will form a new mountain range and the river, which is older than the newly formed um, landscape now flows through the landscape and it is able to erode down into the mountain range or piece of land that is now formed due to tectonic forces as it's able to erode at a fast enough speed where it flows through the land, the landscape and the feature that has formed and therefore your river is older than the newly formed landform and therefore we, we refer to that as antecedent drainage pattern.